Well, a while ago, Adam Fraser was researching courage. Dr. Fraser is a writer and a speaker and, a, and he's a researcher. He studied biomedical science and he partners with unis to further our knowledge in the areas of perform- performance and culture and our well-being. But he was really interested in the value of visualising unhelpful thoughts in our head and visualising them as an external character. And he came across a really interesting one and found out a bit about how useful it can be to have a concept of your inner character as a person. He joins us now. Hello, Adam. Hey, Sarah. How are you doing? Tell us about the strategy of, in terms of courage, of, of what to do with this inner voice that's, that's giving you fear and telling you you can't do things. Yeah, well, if you think about courage, what, what happens is often our stories and our thoughts and our emotions well up and stop us being courageous and we play it safe. And for a really long time, psychology's taught us, well, when those thoughts and emotions come up, you've got to fight them, you've got to get rid of them, and you've got to turn them into positive thoughts and emotions. And what's happening in the research now is we're rethinking that strategy. And one of the real interesting things is well, can, can we let those thoughts and stories exist? Because it's really hard to get rid of them. Can we let them exist and, and still do the right behavior anyway? And one of the most interesting strategies is this externalizing or picturing that those thoughts and emotions come from an external character. Right. So that voice in you that says, no, you can't do this or yeah, I'm or hopeless. you're an idiot or yeah. you won't pull this off or this mm. hard conversation's going to go really bad. Yeah, all those things. Um, So there's some interesting research. A lot of it started in children where, like kids with ADHD, they would treat though, they would teach them how that impulsive part of their brain was, you know, called the monkey mind. And they would talk about, well, don't let the monkey mind take over. Or even people with anxiety and OCD, that they would, those negative thoughts, they would picture it was literally a character in their brain. And, And some of the research showed some really strong evidence and findings of that when you externalize those thoughts and emotions, they have less control over you. So by externalizing it, you give it a name and create it into like a character. Literally. Yeah, that's exactly it. And um, it's, (laughs) you were alluding to when I was researching this, I, I, I would interview extreme athletes, you know, people that can really hurt themselves when they did these events. And what they talked about is they experienced fear, but they didn't let that fear control them. But one of the most interesting ones is I was interviewing a woman called Catherine Davis, who does uh, like a lot of acrobatic, you know, dangerous sort of Cirque du Soleil things that if she messes up, she's going to really hurt herself. And, And I said to her, like, before you go and perform, do you have those negative thoughts and emotions? And she said, well, of course I do, because I'm doing dangerous things. And I said, well, how do you manage them? And she said, do you mean Kevin? And I'm like, I, I don't know who Kevin is, but how do you manage those thoughts and emotions? She goes, yeah, that's Kevin. And <laughs> what she'd done is created this character and it, it almost exists in her brain. And before she goes out to perform, Kevin says, you're going to screw it up or you haven't prepared or, and she would almost coexist with this character and go, yeah, yeah, I know Kevin. Like, I know, I know you always say that, but right now I'm going to focus on my preparation or my warm up. or, and, and what she said is by externalizing it, it had such like, it had less control over her and she yeah. could go acknowledge that it was there, but not, it wasn't how she described it is she said, Kevin's always there, but Kevin doesn't get to run the show. Right. I'm in charge of Kevin. Yeah, well, yeah, or we just kind of turn Kevin down a little bit and make him sit in the corner and, and put him off to the side. Mm. But yeah, I mean, I, I share this in, I do a keynote called No Thanks Kevin, where I talk about this. And yeah, I get countless emails from people going, oh my gosh, like I, I use that before a sales meeting or before a presentation or even before a hard conversation to really manage that those thoughts and emotions don't control me, that I'm in control of my behaviour. Right. I'm um, actually giving an, um, I should say to all the Kevins out there, this is not an attack on you. This is just one woman's name for her inner voice, right? It yeah, doesn't. Brian or Dennis <laughs> works just as well. Right. Okay. Well, maybe Kevins have a Catherine. Well, right. They're like, shut up, Catherine. You know, yeah. I can do this. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think you're finding solutions there. You're doing well. <laughs> Dr. Adam Fraser is is with us, and we're talking about that sort of inner critic, as you are 
uh, encountering the need to build some courage and just naming it, give it an actual help in in that you can then turn that inner critic down if his name's Kevin or her name's Catherine or whatever it is. So what should you say to your inner Kevin? Well, um, what the research is showing is... as I said before, you don't try and get rid of it or fight it. It's much more about letting Kevin exist. And it's so interesting, like my youngest daughter, she has ADHD and we sent her on this course that taught how there's different characters in the brain. So rock brain is where you're really stuck on something and you won't give up on anything or or topic twister is where you keep changing the topic. And I hadn't shared Kevin with her, but she came up to me one day and she said, dad, I've I've, I've created a new character and it's called the Whisperer. And I said, well, what, what does the Whisperer do? And she said, well, the Whisperer, when I'm trying to do something hard or, or I'm nervous at school or I have to do a test, the Whisperer often comes in and says, you're not going to do a, jo- a good job or you're not going to do this. And I said, well, how do you manage the Whisperer? And she goes, well, yeah, I just tell the Whisperer to sit outside. And, that, and, and what she talked about is how there is this character, but she doesn't have to pay attention to it. And it works incredibly well for her and she uses it all the time. So no matter what our age is, this strategy mm. can work really well. Isn't that interesting? I wonder if kids just do this naturally and as we're an adult, we're sort of a bit ashamed to do this. It's a bit embarrassing. People might think you're crazy if you're talking to yourself a bit. Oh, look, I've got executives who, you know, I was talking to a really senior group um, and I shared this concept and next time I caught up with them they went oh my god we love Kevin like everyone's talking about Kevin and before a big pitch we'll go how's your Kevin and people might say well actually he's pretty good today or oh far out Kevin kept me up last night and even in meetings people would say like if someone's been a real pain in the butt and shooting everything down they'd just go yeah I think that's your Kevin talking like And what they talked about is how valuable this concept Uh, is. Interesting. We are talking to Adam Fraser on ABC Evenings across New South Wales and the ACT. And he is a a writer, a speaker, a researcher. He studied biomedical science and he he looks into areas of performance and culture and well-being. And one area when he was researching courage was about this inner person and how you talk to it and how you calm them down and get rid of them to some extent or perhaps embrace your inner Kevin. Any Kevins listening, I, I, I want you to know it's it's not an attack on you. It was just what Catherine called her inner voice. If you're a Kevin, you can call it Catherine. If anyone else is relating to this and they do this, do give me a call. I'm interested to hear, 1300 222 So we need to make friends with this character within them and, and show them a bit of sort of care, do we? Can we talk them down? Yeah, yeah, very much. And and what this stops is, you know, we've been taught in the past to have this really combative relationship with our brain and where we go, oh my gosh, don't say, don't say that to yourself or, or don't feel that. Or even if you think about a, a, a presentation, we often say to ourselves, oh, don't get nervous. Oh my gosh, I'm getting nervous. And we start to panic. And, and what, what the research shows is the more you try and fight and suppress your thoughts or your emotions, the stronger they actually become. Mm. And so what the real sort of cutting edge in psychology, cutting edge research in psychology is showing is that if you can kind of accept, well, yeah, I'm about to do this thing and yeah, Kevin's saying this to me or Kevin's doing that. Yeah, well, it's really important. So that's probably normal. What, your ability to to cope with that situation is dramatically increased rather than you're in the, inside your head battling your thoughts and, and worrying, you actually send yourself into this downward spiral. Yeah. And when we can kind of go, well, okay, today yeah, I'm just having a bad day or, or today I'm particularly nervous, that's all right. What, what, what we know is you're much more likely to do a more constructive behaviour rather than get inside your head and fight it. Mm. Yeah. Well, everybody has one, don't they? Because otherwise they'd be, what, a bit of a sociopath. (laughs) You nailed it. That's exactly right. Like the only people that don't have, well, actually, there's two groups that don't have it. People who have done too much personal development and they're trying to convince themselves they don't have a Kevin and sociopaths. So, you know, you don't want to be in either of those groups. You need a Kevin. (laughs) You do. Everybody needs a Kevin. Right. it's, It's interesting, isn't it? Because You've done all this work on courage and so kind of paying attention to that inner voice and and 
not beating it down, but, you know, reasoning with it is obviously important in courage. Have you studied sort of like extreme courage that's required in things like military service, like beyond everyday life? Because I'm wondering what they do with that sort of inner doubt. Yeah, I mean, that's an area we haven't gone into because, I mean, our focus with the different universities we work with is we, we focus more on people in normal walks of life and um, and we, we look at, you know, primarily business. So yeah. we, we tend to focus on, I mean, that other group, I have looked at the research around that and, and what's interesting is they talk about that base jumpers or big wave riders feel fear, they have that doubt. I mean, even there was a really interesting piece of research that came out of the US that showed athletes before a competition, you know, we often think, oh, well, yeah, they shouldn't get nervous, don't get anxious, stay calm, be relaxed. And what this study showed is that nerves and anxiety before competition only reduce performance if the athlete thought it was a bad thing. So if the athlete's on the starting line panicking, going, oh my gosh, I've got to get under control. I've got to stop saying that to myself. Why am I, why am I panicking? Their performance fell apart. But if right. the athlete you know, did yeah. the thing we've been talking about where they go, oh, wow, okay, I'm really nervous, but that's because this is an important meet and, you know, uh, this means a lot to me. If if they kind of went, well, yeah, I'm more nervous than normal, but that's still okay, it had no impact on their performance. So even these these extreme groups who do these big bouts of courage, the mm. same thing applies. Interesting. They've all We've all got a Kevin unless we're – Really not kind of shouldn't <laughs> unless have, we're messed up unless we're <laughs> particularly messed up. Jack and Clune says, "Hey, I listen carefully to everything my inner Kevin says. It's usually right. It's a great idea." <laughs> okay, that's Keeps very optimistic. Yep. Maybe <laughs> maybe his Kevin's more of his Jiminy Cricket. So it doesn't matter the name of your inner Kevin, or if people think you're just not quite normal. Embrace your inner Kevin and tell them to stand down occasionally, Adam. Absolutely.